Welcome back to the Chromecast at the Rising Moon. Hey, today we have a pick a card for you. And this pick a card is what do you need to know about them? Now this could be a work situation, it could be a family situation, it could be a friendship situation, it could be a romance situation. I did not set that intention. It is simply what do you need to know about them and it will be individual for each person. There is gonna be a moment here with the cards where you can concentrate, see which one calls out to you. That is the message that you're most meant to receive and I will see you at the time of your reading. Welcome back. If you chose pile number one, then this is your reading. We're putting the number one over there. Please remember, I don't know if this is a professional, a personal, a romantic, or a familial relationship, but what do you need to know about them is the question that we're asking. There are timestamps in the description box down below. Before I get started, don't forget to subscribe. It helps my channel. If you like the reading, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. If you want to book me for a private reading, there's a link to my website in the description box down below. All right, the void is the new moon. It is also the dark moon. That is new beginnings, the ability to start again. Remember, the new moons are about manifestations. It's coming out with the cave, which is sometimes a call to like withdraw into self. The hermit withdraws into a cave to spend some time with oneself, to learn some difficult lessons. I have this feeling like nothing's been happening with the person that you're asking about. And that is no place like home. Wow, a lot of like home, home, home energy. If this is a romantic interest, they are telling you you still have a little bit more healing to do, particularly if it's a situation separation, but let's find out. With a message of concern, okay. And then that comes out with the prince. Light attribute, romantic charm, and potential for power. The shadow attribute is using power for self-aggrandizement. Um, here's the thing. I think that you're kind of like wondering, do I get the, do I ever get a human again? And you do. It's just that you have spent some time on your own learning about your ability to care for yourself, to kind of weed the flowers from the garden type of thing, to get rid of the people who are throwing off a ton of red flags. And you might be asking about somebody that you've recently met after spending some period of time by yourself. Um, remember, if you've been healing from codependency, you have to approach new relationships slowly. Um, one of the hallmarks of codependency is overinvestment too soon, meaning like, you know, you meet somebody and like, hey, we, we should move in together really quickly because who wants to drive that hour in between our places? Drive the hour. It takes a while to get to know somebody. And if we rush something, then we miss red flags. And that's the only thing I've got here is the message of concern. Kind of don't, and with the no place like home, that's why it's like, are you maybe thinking about rushing into a commitment because it feels so good at the start of something, particularly after a long period of, you know, kind of, I want to say isolation, but kind of focusing on self. One, two, and three. What else do we need to know here? What do they need to know about them? The void moon is something just beginning. The cave, no place like home. Let's see what we've got. I have the Page of Pentacles in reverse, which can be failing to learn a lesson sometimes or needing to learn a lesson. With the Knight of Swords in the upright, which can be travel, uh, certainty, swiftness, moving very quickly. That's what I think I've got here. Be careful. The only thing I've got here are the Lovers in the upright, which is the card for Geminis. It's also the card for Soulmates. So listen, this appears to be a personal pile. And it does appear to be a caution around don't move too quickly with a new person. If you've had a difficult past, take your time. If you've really like healed, then you don't, you know to put more stock in your relationship with yourself over the course of time than in the relationship with another person because other people have all their own work to do. It doesn't have to do with anything like love not being a satisfying experience, but rather that it's not all those to our experience. I have the Hierophant in reverse non-traditional, non-conforming energy. Interesting. Um, I have the Seven of Wands in reverse. I have the Ace of Wands in reverse. We're going to get these down. It's a slightly difficult energy. Four of Cups in the upright underlying issues. Five of Cups in reverse. 
I'm gonna take my two qualifiers as well, the Hanged Man in reverse, and then the Eight of Swords in reverse. So I have good news and I have caution news. So the good news is that it looks like you've embarked on a relationship and you're very interested in where it's supposed to go. But you're being told kind of don't rush things. Like you haven't actually had a lot of the hallmarks of a relationship that tell you whether or not it will stand the test of time. And one of them is how well you argue with one another. Like this pile is coming off as somebody who thinks they might have met a person that they're going to marry after a difficult period, meaning that they, that you, um, will have spent a little bit too much time alone, potentially after some dissatisfying relationships, and you've met somebody and you're like, this is the one, this is the one, this is the one. Be careful. Please go back over your lessons from the past and find where you might have like taken a wrong turn with a relationship in the past that left you frustrated. The Seven of Wands in reverse is knowing the battles like not to engage in sometimes. Like you're... When we first fall in love, everything is giddy and wonderful and we want to rush things because we think it will make that feeling last forever and it won't. We actually, it takes a while to get to know somebody. You will very rarely meet people who are like, yeah, we knew after six weeks, etc. It's better, particularly if you've had a rough relationship uh, history, to take your time with things, to take your time. This is a non-traditional approach. You're asking if uh, this is a person that you're going to be with according to this pile. And there's a lot of potential here, but you like uh, you have to work out your the mechanics of a long-term relationship. The, the easy stuff is passion and having fun and shared interests. It's how do you, you know, divvy up bills and responsibilities and how do you solve conflict? And I have a small problem around solving conflict um, because you, when you are happy, have a tendency to let things go if take control. And it causes emotional repression issues, which is my four of cups there. It is not time to consider like taking this to uh, should we live together energy. You don't know enough about how this person resolves conflict and they don't do it well. Like it's a skill that you will have to acquire together. One and two and three. Like you don't know how to hmm, voice your concerns to one another and have them heard according to this manifest. Want this? Keep the faith <laughs> a little bit longer. Life changing decision, self sabotage. Okay, so pile number one, what I've got here, what do you need to know about them? You don't know how they solve conflicts well. Like you're, you have a tendency to excuse things when you're like in, when you're a little bit, you know, when you're in love. We all do that. It's so normal. It's absolutely not any form of criticism. But this is saying that you like, mm, there will be a time to move forward. There will be a time to move forward. But you need to make it this decision around like actually having gotten to know somebody and their less than glorious attributes. Let's put it that way. Um, it's not a bad energy. It's genuinely not. But what it is saying here is that there are underlying issues in a communication style that aren't fully compatible and it will like you need less pressure on the situation to figure out a more workable long-term solution meaning if you rush things then like having an argument that you can't solve right away because you don't have the communication skills you haven't developed that rhythm or how to be heard by one another can cause a beginning relationship to break under the strain if you've rushed the process of moving in together or buying a home together or of potentially getting engaged. This is just telling you to slow your roll ever so slightly because you don't know how to solve problems together yet and that if you're considering marriage, there's a path, this hangman in reverse with the eight of swords in reverse, but you need to make it in a fully informed fashion in order to get the best possible results. Meaning that this person has long-term potential, but you don't know the way that they shut things down because that's what they do. They have a tendency to shut things down. You might fear confrontation because you didn't grow up in a household that was safe to have it in. A light filled angel is at your side. It watches over you at every dark doorway. Have courage, awaken the warrior of light within you. I, pile number one, what I've kind of got here is somebody who has trouble stating their wants and needs. And so things have a tendency to build up. 
it may have cost you some relationships in the past because nobody can live like that for long. You can't sublimate your desires to another person um, without it eventually taking a toll. Um, for anybody, I cannot see a way that this is anything other than a personal relationship. It's the start of one though, and you just are getting a little bit of a call to remember, don't rush this process. Don't, it, it won't, listen, if somebody is really meant to be your real person, it doesn't matter if you take your time. And it gives you a chance to really build a relationship that can endure. And here's the thing, whenever anybody tells me they have a relationship and we never fight, it's like, that's not actually healthy. There is a push and pull energy in relationships, and we are meant to be able to have conflict and to resolve it well. See, I've got everything turning out well. I'm just, I've got to, you know, don't, don't rush into this. Make sure you really know how this person can shut people down with frustration and anger because they don't know how to deal with frustration and anger. Wait until you've had a good couple of like, you know, barn burner type fights before you decide this is the person I'm keeping around for all time because we do need to be able to have that. Mountain, know that you're protected as you face challenges, but remain cautious. Caution is being, here we go, unity, a time of divine understanding, renewal, peace, and hope. You radiate and attract great love. Take a more cautious approach to a new relationship. It's not going to get away. People try to rush things, and that means that you're not in a secure space. And the only way to have an enduring long-term relationship that is emotionally satisfying is to be in that kind of space where you can fight, you can resolve conflict, and you, it doesn't damage your connection. Meaning when it's a really profound connection, you can have things go wrong, and it doesn't determine everything. One, two, here we go. Let's get this down here too. Time apart. <laughs> All right. Finances. I'm telling you, you guys don't have yeah, vulnerability. Support. Um, group number one, not the sexiest message, but please remember, it's not saying there's anything wrong with your relationship. It's just telling you, if you're thinking about moving in together, if you're thinking we should get engaged, this is perfect. We have all the heat. We have all the, please slow down. Please slow down. It is, uh, there are things you don't know about each other yet that you need to know about them in order to make a long-term decision. And if you rush a process, it just costs you more time in the long run because you'll have over-invested in something that you're not really sure about yet. So the time apart finances and vulnerability cards. Take control, manifest, keep the faith. Um, one of the ways to avoid any type of toxicity in relationships is to still remain very self-reliant, both emotionally and, if at all possible, financially. So kind of concentrate on building up your own stuff with that cave. If you've been waiting for somebody to come along and, like, complete you, that, that's not the way it works. We are complete, and then the right person stands beside us and walks the path with us. Um... I have focus, and it was in reverse, but focus. That's a self-focus card with invisible. Woo. And then I have circles. Okay. So that's a complete cycles energy as well. Um, <laughs> you're at risk of repeating a pattern because you want to lock something down, according to these cards, before it is time to do so. Meaning take your time because... Uh, I, whoever this is, you've had a, a difficult relationship history already and where things kind of like things start out really, really well. And then because you try to rush to the end, like let's firm this up, let's have, let's live together, let's get engaged. Um, there are things that you don't know about that person and that's actually what's gone wrong. Give yourself the time to get to really know somebody. And it will also help you get to know yourself in the areas that like to have the best love and relationships that you desire that you need to improve on as well. Abundance, keep a positive mind fest, manifest exactly what you want, gratitude and bliss. Heart with a key. Welcoming love, meeting the one, open your heart, getting together and perfect. See, I think you want to move in together is what I've got here. And you're being told, please don't do that. It's still too early. Like, make sure that you have had plenty of, I just want to say, discussions which in which, like, your point needed to be heard. 
Because what I've got is that you just like you learned to kind of not assert yourself. Wedding rings. Yep, that's what I thought. Okay. Um, we have wedding rings, which is union, wedding, married, soul connection, eternal love, everlasting promise, date, meeting someone new, getting back out there, plan, set a date. Pile number one, what this pile is apparently about is somebody who has met a person and what they want to know about them is, am I going to marry him? Am I going to marry him? Listen, until you know whether or not you can fight with them and it's not something that causes emotional heartache, pain, or toil, it's not time. And it's very particularly around money is the thing people fight the most about. And apparently... You don't know how to voice your concerns without, like you get shut down a lot because you grew up in a household where either you were shut down and then it comes out in large eruptive energies, meaning that you don't say anything until you're ready to yell about it. And that's something to learn to do a little bit better with. The connection itself looks good. It does, but it says that you need to put some more work into the other relationship dynamics that bring long-term happiness attraction you attract romantic love by enjoying this moment fully i'm going to keep going here one and two and three i'm going to get a one more form of oracle card on this um group number one it's like there's more to come on this one like there's some lessons to be learned about this person's separation Time apart from your partner is on the horizon. And then I get deception on this one. Someone is wearing a false mask in this relationship. Hey, group number one, what I kind of get is it's you. You have trouble talking, like you don't want to start fights and so you don't bring things up. And that is causing like momentum and pressure to build in particular situations in your life. And you're being asked to slow down just a little bit on this until... You have figured out, do we have the type of relationship where we can fight, we can have conflict, we can disagree on things, but then we figure out how to make it right again. And that's the thing that is holding you back just a little bit here. What else do we have? What else do we have for group number one? If you're asking about like the long term, it, it just kind of looks like maybe you're rushing. Life-changing decisions, self-sabotage to lock something down and that's an insecure energy. And what the goal is to have healthy relationships is always to have a secure attachment style. And just trying to like understand, you have to be able to fight with somebody, you have to be able to fight with somebody. We have trust. I accept that my inner voice will always guide me correctly. And two. Empathy, I am open to seeing both sides of a situation. Trust and empathy. Um, almost every empath I've ever met has to deal with, because they feel other people's feelings, sometimes they take too much responsibility for them. Um, sometimes they've been told they're too sensitive, and so they learn to repress their feelings. Group number one, the thing that you need to know is that this has a, like a good energy on it going forward, but there are skills that you need to acquire before like a long-term connection is advisable and that if you rush the process sometimes that can take a relationship that has a lot of potential and uh, unfortunately doom it because everything needs a little bit of space to grow and it looks to me like this particular pile is somebody like is really like let's move in together let's get engaged let's set the date and it's a new relationship Honest to goodness, it does not make me very popular, but like it, unfortunately, it's the, it's the steps towards healthy relationships. Please don't even go near that as an idea until you've been with somebody for at least a year. Because a year gives people long enough to get out of their best behavior, to start confronting the like distractions and the tensions and the annoyances of life. And that's where you really find out if something has an enduring quality. It's like it's really easy to be in love when it's new and everybody is like, you know, really into each other and they have all this passion for each other. You have to let that wear off a little bit to find out if somebody's meant to be in your life for decades. We have seek a union of mind and spirit. Air is also a logic energy. Um, you want something from an emotional place and not from a logical standpoint on this. And that's okay. And love isn't a particularly logical thing. But the reason that people have punishing uh, relationship cycles is that they won't employ logic because it takes a lot to keep us happy for a long time. The dagger. Conflict and danger lie in wait with the serpent. A sly and subtle approach is needed. 
Group number one, the message on this is essentially the same thing over and over again, which is you do not know how to share your real feelings. You do not need to, you don't know how to have conflict yet. And these are skills best acquired outside of a living together energy. I know this one is not gonna make me super popular. The relationship itself looks good. The skill set that you need to have an enduring relationship it needs more time. It needs more time. Don't rush a process because it is more likely to break under undue strain than to rise to the like to the moment. Meaning if it causes tensions to rise more when there's too much on the line in a new relationship. Group number one, that was an interesting energy because it kind of looks like there's somebody that you want to get engaged to or move in with. And the cards are saying, listen, that's a possibility, but you need to have multiple experiences with this person before you know if that's really the path that you're meant to be walking with them. And currently you do not know how to have conflict and resolve it in a productive fashion. And you will learn that skill far more effectively if you do so outside of living together. And if you try and pressure the situation because you wanna lock something down, it will not guarantee it. It will just bring more pressure and tension into a situation because one of the ways that we learn to have good conflict skills is that we each are able to withdraw to our own corner, to our own space to sort things through. If you rush the process where we're both sharing the same space, it brings more tension and more weight to a situation and you might be able to slowly and effectively acquire skills that will carry you through a lifetime. But if you rush a process, sometimes it puts too much pressure on a new relationship take your time take your time don't try to rush to a destination enjoy the journey all right group number one interesting message for you i will see you next time welcome back if you chose pile number two this is your reading we're putting the number two over there so people can easily fast forward to their readings but there will be timestamps in the description box down below star mentaro is bringing you your predictive cards these are uh oracle cards i shuffled for but did not see yet hey guys before i get started don't forget to uh, hit that like button if you like the reading if you want to book me for a private reading there is a link to my website in the description box down below and uh, let's see what we've got going here all right this is what do you need to know about them and this uh, archetype card actually is in the upright so it is the light attribute of father talent for creating and supporting life positive guiding life within a tribal unit that's a very good nurturing type of energy and then it comes out with, I do not read uh, these particular Oracle cards in reverse, which is will. That is, remember, willpower. Willpower is the thing that gets absolutely everything done, but we do have to differentiate between what we are trying to make happen and what is meant to happen sometimes. I've just got something who's got a very, very stubborn, stubborn quality. With yin, which is the divine feminine energy, so what do you need to know about this person? Like they can get in their own way sometimes. Like they're stubborn to the point of, like they really might have confused stubbornness with willpower. Willpower we, works in service of us and our stubbornness almost always is the thing that uh, creates blockages and blocks our path. And that is coming out with the maiden. Interesting. Brand new relationship energy. And that comes out with community as well. Hey, listen, so group number two, what do you need to know about this person? I actually really like this person, particularly if you're asking about a romantic connection. They are dependable and reliable. They're very stubborn, though, and they don't uh, express their emotions easily. If you're wondering if this is a relationship that can go the distance, that community vibe, particularly if you've already had a friendship like I have a very strong energy around this person. Now we have cards all over the table. There we go. We have the three of wands in reverse, which can be an open relationship with the four of pentacles in reverse, which is the need to release something. The 10 of swords in reverse, which is trauma, the queen of swords in the upright. I have the hanged man in the upright. I have the king of cups in reverse the chariot in reverse, and then the nine of pentacles. 
Uh, you have likely been recovering from the trauma of a relationship potentially with someone who was a narcissist. You're asking about somebody who seems like as if it's a fairly new relationship because I have that maiden energy. We're going to take our two qualifiers, which is the King of Swords and the Upright. And then it comes out with the Six of Cups in the upright, which is a past life relationship. So here's what I've got on the table. This appears to be a romantic relationship. Um, I had set this with the intention of it could be any form of relationship, but this one's a romantic one. Uh, you're still healing from some things in the past, potentially from having been in a relationship in which you were not the sole focus of it. But it looks to me like you're doing your work. You've got a small call to remember that you need to stay on top of that, that our relationships are meant to give us joy, but they don't actually really complete us in the way that we want them to sometimes. Um, just a different perspective on your past as being in your past. Our past does not actually predict our future. I have somebody in your life who is like, they're the real deal. If you haven't met them yet, you will soon. But if you're watching this particular relationship uh, reading, um, it is likely that you're wondering if you're like repeating something, if the past is repeating. I don't think so. I think this person's a very different person. They can like state their wants and needs. Um, it's important that you like going forward maintain the sense of independence. That is really the thing that will keep you safe from this energy of the past that I've got over here. I just had you needing to release a relationship with a narcissist that caused you a great deal of trauma, but this chariot in reverse, it looks to me like you've done the work and that is done. And you're asking about somebody new. And uh, it's potentially, tear down the walls around your heart, give and receive security and warmth. Yeah, I've got you holding somebody at a little bit of a distance because of your own past trauma. And uh, remember, if you did the work to heal that, like you're in the clear on that. I actually really like this energy. This person is like capable of being very emotionally generous. Again, if this is not the person that you're asking about now, know that you have this energy that's very close in of somebody. And like they they're likely have been divorced is the thing. Because I do have that father energy, the Six of Cups energy as well. Um... I don't have any cause for concern about the person coming up. The only thing is, is that like your independence is the thing that will allow you to feel safe and secure in this particular relationship. It's, you may have, you may know this person as a friend already with this community energy in this three of wands in reverse. It could have been a friends with benefits situation that you're looking at turning into something more serious. Um, but that your own emotional trauma from the past, because the Ten of Swords in reverse is, like, for me, the most traumatic card. And it looks like it's in the past to me. Like, you've done all the work. You've done the... Being healed from codependency is actually represented by the independent cards, which is the Nine of Pentacles in the upright. Being self-supporting in as many ways as you can is the easiest way to make sure that you stay clear of that particular energy. We're going to get a lot of love cards on this one because you're asking about somebody and I think you're afraid that you're missing something and I don't think you are. And again, if this person has not entered your life, they are a divorced dad. I don't think they have full custody. I'm not sure if they have one or more child. But I have this energy of, like, this person who has good priorities. Um, you're just really hesitant because of this narcissist energy in the past. Soulmate, sudden progress and change, pausing to reflect, balance, and then prepare for change with heavy burden. Um, I'm going to take heavy burden back. Yeah, I think that you've met somebody and that they hold a lot of interest for you, but that your scars from the past are the things that are making you say, well, is this real? Uh, is there more to this person? Because I missed something in the past with this person. Um, this person, the narcissist, who apparently did a fair amount of damage to your heart space. And it's caused you to be a little bit... There we go. Obstacles union. <laughs> Let's go ahead and pick this up. We've got even more underneath this, and family was there as well. Um, 
yeah travel obstacles and union you have a little bit of progress to make on your path in a healing journey but the person that you're asking about i like very much the only thing is is that i really do have a significant relationship in their past that may have actually already yielded a child don't like don't disallow somebody simply because they too have a past um, it looks to me like this person has a good, kind, generous heart. They're emotionally mature. They're able to have a conversation that involves some form of conflict without losing their darn minds. You're asking, I think, if you can trust this person. What do you need to know about this person? Because you're afraid they're very much like somebody from the past, but they're not. This is an entirely different person. And by the way, if this fits your energy, it's been it's been a minute since you had a like a just exclusive relationship, likely because you got, you know, just singed, burned, and potentially burned to the ground from something in the past. That Ten of Swords energy in reverse is just always a hard one. But the time of trauma and pain has come to a close. And there's this union energy with this person that you're asking about. They have a very good emotional balance. Another obstacles card. Blocks, pathways, delays, unhealed wounds are blocking forward movement, which is almost exactly what we're talking about. You're asking about this person and you just are being reminded not to hold that particular person on the hook for something they never did. Meaning I've got like a bad actor, a bad player, or a person in the background that like taught you that maybe you shouldn't trust people. You can trust people. You can trust people. You can particularly trust yourself, group number two. The thing that you need to know about this person is that you need to judge them by who they are, not who you have once been with. Denial, past life love, healing. All right, leap of faith. All right, so what we're going with here, group number two, is this is somebody who has had the stuffing kicked out of them by a past life relationship. You have not had a significant connection or allowed yourself to have a significant connection since that particular person. And you're asking potentially about what's coming up for you or somebody that you've just met. And here's the thing, this person is a single, likely the, the gender is coming off as male. Now, like, you know, gender is not something I invest in tremendously because it's mostly a societal construct. We invest a lot in biological function as being about gender, and it's not. This person has a good caretaking, caring vibe. He does apparently have a child and is a good dad to that child. If that's holding you back, then please reconsider that. Hammer, which is sabotage, rebuilding, interrogation, repetitive, persistent, and working on it. I think you're still working on allowing somebody close access to you after you encountered somebody who just, it's not that they were a bad human being, it's that they were like missing an emotional part and took far more than they gave. And you're asking about a person coming up. If this person is not already in your life, this is somebody apparently that you really can, like this is somebody you've known before. You do your work and you find this person. Cassette, outdated thinking, conditioning, replaying events over in your head, and then clock. Needs time, takes time, in time, time to heal, and progress with love call. Someone expresses love, a message of love, thinking about you and letting you know. Group number two, here's the deal. You're still trying to get over some difficult stuff from the past. You may not be as healed as you think you are if you are holding somebody on the hook for things that they did not do because they might be this person. Take your time, get to know this person. I have this really, really good energy on this, meaning that this person is kind of a true boo boy scout kind of person and that you're just concerned that you're, you're, you're just having difficulty investing in that because of somebody who was not a particularly sincere person. Somebody did you dirty and now you're afraid that everybody else is covered in mud too. And here's the thing, I've got this really good human being on the table, but like you hold people to a very high standard now because you're afraid of this repeating scenario. It won't repeat, you healed. And keeping people at a distance and waiting to, I've just got somebody who's a little bit of a harsh judge on the people around them currently because they're trying to ward something off not realizing that it's already warded off. Free yourself and then true love. 
Well, group number two could not feel better about this than I already do. So I don't think I'm going to keep belaboring the point, but we're going to get some energy cards. If you are asking, if you are watching this pile because you're asking about somebody that came into your life, but you're very afraid that they're going to just be like the last person who did you wrong, that's the thing to heal. Everyone is different. And yes, the energy is, it's called repeating it until you repair it, but you repaired it. Like, I think you wouldn't face some truth about somebody in the past. Like, there were red flags there and you wouldn't see them because we do that when we're in love. We always want to, like, you know, give somebody the benefit of the doubt. It doesn't mean that you should never extend the benefit of the doubt to somebody who is doing everything they can to prove things. And that's the only caution I've got on this table is, like, don't, don't see the face of what looks like your abuser. Um, on every single person who comes towards you. All that you needed to heal was you. It's not men in general. We have Six Chakra Archangel Metatron, Star Morning, Woman Holding a Coin, Archangel Gabriel, which is about truth and clarity and messages. The Woman Holding a Coin is somebody who is very good at like keeping all things in balance. Group number two, this is going to be quite the speedy reading because it looks like you're asking, you know, what aren't they telling me? What aren't they hiding? Because you don't fully trust your own ability to take care of yourself. But you did all that work to overcome something. And now you really, really are the person who can spot the, the pretenders. You can spot the pretenders. You don't need to keep wondering what is he pretending about. Let somebody put in the time and earn your trust and earn your love. I just had somebody being represented by the King of Swords, who is somebody who is telling the truth. The Six of Cups in the Upright, which is that, you know, past life connection. But it's also um, like generosity and kindness and a very giving person. They do appear to be a single parent. I don't think they have soul custody. Planning, burnout, which is letting go of something. Personal riches, opportunities, and then love life. Now, I'm a keyword reader, meaning I'm not going to read these little paragraphs underneath because I have not found them to have any validity. And the way the cards speak to me is in a sentence, essentially planning, let go, personal riches, and which is always about focusing on your own ability to provide for yourself, opportunities, love life, and commitment. Uh, group number two, the person that you are asking about is what do you need to know about them? Apparently that you can trust them, that they are bringing their A-game to the table, um, that this person is, they're representing themselves in an above-board fashion. They are representing themselves in an above-board fashion. The thing that is making you doubt your ability to trust in that is actually somebody from the past and we do have to determine at some point, well, that was a different person, and now I, too, am a different person. The like potential problems of the past cannot repeat when I have learned the lessons that I need to, and you have. I just have you being able to spot what it is you need to see in a person. So more than anything, understand that you can trust yourself to spot things. It may be because you really didn't see something in the past, and it may have involved being cheated on with that three of wands in reverse, which can be a really difficult energy. One and two and three. All right. Devil. Take care immediately to avoid contemptation and deceit. All right. Let's keep going here. I get the feeling you're actually just a tiny bit too cautious with this person. I, I, that's what I think. I think you're very, you have a lot of trouble getting, letting somebody in. Know that you're protected as you face challenges, but remain cautious. And then owl. There are spiritual messages and great wisdom to be found during this time of transition. There comes a point in our healing journey when we have to allow ourselves to be healed. And group number two, that's the what you need to know. Because the question was, what do you need to know about them? And I got nothing on this person. <laughs> like, it's like, what do you need to know about them? That they're not the person from the past. And like, maybe the real answer is in why, why do you think that's coming back to you when you've done all this work, you've changed, you've grown, you do not need to be forever on your guard to be safe. Okay.
So group number two, what do you need to know about them? They look awesome. What do you need to know about you? You can trust yourself. You can trust yourself. It's never going to rise to that level again because you learned how to value you. Okay? That was your reading. Take care. Be well. Welcome back. If you chose pile number three, this is your reading. We're putting the number three over there so that people can easily fast forward to their reading. We have the crow deck bringing us the predictive spread. We've got some pre-selected oracle cards. I didn't look at them. Um, we'll get some more as the reading reveals the need. Um, I didn't intend this necessarily as a romantic reading, but so far in the what do you need to know about them, everything has been about a romantic relationship. Let's get started here. All that glitters is not gold. All that glitters. Okay, um, th straight up, there's a little bit of a warning not to invest in something that looks good versus is good, okay? Um, hey, before I get started, please don't forget to subscribe. It helps my channel. And if you want to book me for a private reading, there's a link to my website in the description box down below. I forgot to say that. Let's get going. We have the mentor. Advice, sage advice from another person. The owl, of course, is about uh, spirit messages as well. Let's see what we've got here. Courthouse. Um, that can be a fair and balanced situation. It can also be about a situation that involves legal matters. I don't think this is about a settlement, but let's go. Goddess. This was in the upright. Um, uh, these are the only oracle cards I read in reverse because they have a shadow attribute as well. The light attribute is the feminine expressed through wisdom, nature, life worth, and sensuality, but the shadow attribute is exploitation of the female nature and form. And then I have boundaries, which came out in reverse, which is saying that maybe you need to work a little bit on your boundaries and that you invest, you may be investing worth in the wrong person to make sure that they are putting in as much effort as you truly deserve. The mentor energy is often a counselor's energy or counseling energy. It really is as if you're being asked to, you did a lot of work to learn some lessons, make sure you're putting them into play in whoever it is you're asking about, which this might be the only one that's a work relationship because I have the Three of Pentacles in the upright. Three of Pentacles in the upright are collaborative efforts working together. It's a sense of community. See, I just get the sense that you put a lot of work in on self, on knowing your own power, on feeling your own worth. You struggle a little bit still with boundaries, the devil in reverse, yep, release. That is the healing from relationships that don't serve you energy. It can be a recovery energy. With the tower in the upright, it's a, a divine intervention, epiphanies, complete and sudden change, something shocking, surprising. It can be failure, but I don't think it is. Ace of Cups in the upright. I have the judgment card in reverse. Gosh, it's like you've been working on your ability to like choose well for yourself for a long time. Two of swords in reverse. Your path is clear here. Queen of cups in the upright. High priestess in reverse. We're going to take our clarifiers. Nine of wands in the upright, a boundaries card with the knight of wands in reverse. So... I can't tell if you're asking about a particular person or if you're asking about like the person who may be coming into your life. You're being asked to be very careful with your judgment because you have a tendency to believe the best in people with the all that glitters energy. And the mentor is saying that honest to goodness, like you went through a whole process to learn new things about only accepting the love that is worthy of you. Like you've made all of these changes around your love space and it looks like you've achieved a good strong feeling of self-love, you know your own worth, and the only thing that you're concerned about is, like is, are you just gonna, are, <laughs> are you ever gonna encounter someone who is sincere? And this is saying that absolutely you will if you have not already. If you're asking about a very particular person now, the only thing that worries me over here is a slight investment in the wrong person, somebody who has some anger issues. But it's weird because I kind of get the feeling that like the real person is not quite on the scene yet. If you're asking about one person, uh, pay very close attention to their temper with that Knight of Wands in reverse. 
Um, they may not have the world's strongest judgment, but there's already been like evidence on the scene with the Two of Swords in reverse. Don't make excuses for other people's failings. Honest to goodness, it's a, it's a pitfall that very kind and loving people fall into very easily. With boundaries, just a good card around boundaries, around boundaries, around boundaries. And if you're asking about what will help you heal your own tendency towards frustration and anger, um, the only thing that ever causes that is when your boundaries are being disrespected. And we are actually in charge of reinforcing our own boundaries. Anger plays an important part in that, by the way. We need to have a small spark of anger that we do not react to, but that we notice. Where it's the responding, not reacting, is it's like, huh, this person's really honking me off. Maybe they're treading on my boundaries. What do I need to do differently? And what do you need to know about them? Like, if this person is not in your life yet, I actually get this very good, strong, eternal love. Yeah. New love. <laughs> Hot and cold. Mm. Dark night of the soul. Self-sabotage with new perspective. All right. So if you're asking about a person, they look kind of good to me. But you are still, the thing that you will struggle with is a tendency towards flying off the handle. And that honest to goodness, like taking responsibility for like, I feel angry and I need to identify why. I'm not gonna open my mouth and say anything until I'm absolutely certain what I'm actually honked off about. Because you're asking about something and like I, if this person's not in your life yet, I like it. There's this really, really strong energy around, oh no, that's a real person. But the thing that you're being, what do you need to know about them is a little bit more what do you need to know about you? Is that sometimes you, uh, because you struggle to understand what is making you angry sometimes, that's just one of the areas that you need to put a little bit of like investment into, figuring it out. And if you, by the way, if you struggle with anger issues, understand that it's almost always because you grew up around people who did not express their anger in appropriate ways and you learn destructive habits and so you've had to unlearn them. And it's just always a part of a healing journey. But the all that glitters energy is also kind of like, just be a little careful about that because the only thing that you might do is you see people as you want them to be sometimes still. And in the past it may have sustained a relationship that was not fair to you and that the key to like kind of your impulse control, which is what is really at the root of anger, is healing both your root and your sacral chakra and being under, understanding that whenever you feel anger, it's actually trying to tell you that you're afraid of something because your anger is protecting fear. And so kind of figure out what that's about because it's not gonna stop you from having good relationships, but it stops you from feeling good about yourself sometimes. Children, childhood issues as well, interference, time apart, play hard, lesson, new love. The interference card, remember I'm a keyword reader, so I really don't read these too much. It's these keywords spell out a sentence for me. Children, interference, time apart, play hard, lesson, and new love. Look for the lessons that that particular, there's just something from your childhood that is still interfering in your ability to have meaningful relationships with people. And that is so, 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 so normal. It genuinely is, and it's most likely to be represented in the energies around like how to have arguments, which we need to have, how to know how to have arguments. If you're acting, asking about a particular person, I have no issues with them. I don't. But I, I have you not knowing how to argue with somebody currently in a way that like you don't, being passionate is like, having great passion is one thing. Needing to have good boundaries around your response system because you feel threatened or unsafe is a different thing. Uh, whenever like you're having a little trouble controlling your anger, which is what this particular deck is saying, it is because you're not doing a good job of respecting your own boundaries, like calling something to an end before it goes too far, overextending yourself, which seems to be something that you struggle with as well. 
But like everything else on this looks very good. What do you need to know about them? Um, the what do you need to know about them is actually something interior, which is just keep working on your boundaries. Like recognizing why you're upset about something. Every time you get upset about something, just kind of be like, breathe in, breathe out. What am I actually upset about? I'm not going to like give in to this state of being. I'm going to figure out what's bothering me. Soulmate, soul con connection, partnership agreement, soul contract. Paradise, happiness, expansion, joy, playfulness, oneness, enjoying each other. We have heartbroken, which is deeply hurt, sad, separation, breakup, feeling lost, grieving, or mourning. And then the butterfly, relationship evolving to the next phase, healing the inner child and growth. I don't see heartbreak coming up in your future. I think what this is saying is that you have not made the correct connection as to why your anger is an issue sometimes. And it is when you are like you're, it's related to fear and a fear of being hurt, apparently. Not being heard and feeling hurt. Um, whoever it is that you're asking about, I have zero bad vibes around it. I have uh, no information that is, what are you asking about them? Uh, if you're asking if they're really for you, they're saying that like your own need to uh, just do your boundary work to heal something from some trauma in the past is all that stands in your way. The mentor, like going back to like the lessons that you've needed to learn. We really do have to be our own best friend in things. Like understanding what's going on within us to get the best results. Um, here's the thing. I don't have any two of cups or anything on this particular table. If you're asking about a particular person you're having a relationship with, the only thing that stands in its way is a tendency towards being reactionary on your part world. Be open to new possibilities in all areas of your life. Eagle, you will soar towards your destiny with greater clarity and strength. Birth, universal energy brings opportunity and possibility. Um, I kind of get the feeling whoever you're asking about right now is not the end game. Like there are, there are a repeating signature on something so that you can learn a lesson that will give you like greater effect going forward. And a lot of relationships that cross our path are like that. Now, is that going to hold true for absolutely everybody? We're going to get the romance angels involved here because it's weird. It's not a big romantic pairing energy, but it's more that it's like, be careful. You're still learning a lesson. You're still learning a lesson around how to be your best friend, like to take control of the parts of yourself that sometimes derail your progress. And it's not terrible. It's just genuinely not terrible. It's just the thing that you're being reminded of will give you the best results in your relationships. The love of your dragon reaches out to you. The realm of your truth is opening up. And then a wonderful surprise is coming. Remember, this can be a surprise as well. Group number three, what we've got here is whoever you're asking about, the point of the reading should be more about what do I need to be working on? rather than something about them. Because it looks like your temper has been something that, and please remember, like I'm one of the fieriest people around, so uh, you have me for company on that. Um, it's not a character flaw. It is usually evidence of an emotional injury and a poorly learned coping skill. Meaning you think it helped you cope at a different point in your life, but it genuinely did not. And it's something to learn how to recognize the signs around and to practice very good self-management and self-care. And the only thing that you've got here is a potential all that glitters. Not every person who crosses your path is meant to be a partner. Some of them contain a lesson. And in this one, it's not giving me an answer on what the relationship is that you're asking about, Rather, that it is going to present you with an opportunity to handle your anger or frustration differently and to please go towards that with open arms because it contains the seeds for healing, something that has thwarted you in the past. The Oracle, seek guidance and wisdom from, uh, uh, from elders, the black cat, your luck will change, and then fire. Reckless actions lead to conflict. And that is honestly kind of what I've got on this. The person you're asking about, not a darn thing wrong with them. Are they your person or are they part of a test uh, around finding the kind of a stress test, a little bit of a stress test energy around this? But I'm not committing to that one way or the other. 
I'm not committing to that one way or the other, as in I have no dissolution, no breakup, no nastiness on this table, other than be aware that like this person is not the focus of this reading as much as you would think from the way that I asked the question. Instead, they're trying to tell you, you've done all this work to heal. You have a challenge coming up, particularly around your response system, around what gets you angry. And you actually just do the work on figuring out what actually is making you angry. Do you feel unsafe? Do you feel not heard? Do you feel dismissed? Do you feel like someone isn't making you a priority? Figure out what it is you're actually feeling to get a handle on the response. The person you're asking about is fine. And I'm not getting the long-term outcome on this because your guides are like, no, this is the issue. This is the issue. Please pay attention to this part. Having good boundaries in all areas of your life will actually help you cope with the parts of yourself that you're trying to heal. These two stayed behind, so we're going to take them. Worth waiting for. It's safe for you to love. I don't think who you're asking about is the right person yet. Because this is a worth waiting for. Divine timing is at work in your love life. Now, could they then be the right person if you clear a particular hurdle and a healing journey? For some, potentially, yes. Honest to goodness, we want fate to be involved in every single step of our lives, but seriously, it will come back to you when something is fateful. But more, more than anything, I've got, you know, you're still working on something that was a destructive thing in your relationships in the past. Whoever it is you're, at, you're ask, actually asking about, the them that you need to be asking about is you. And what are you still working on? Overcoming to have the best possible outcomes that you can. And here it appears to be a tendency towards anger and, um, and how to control it and how to express it and how to deal with it. And remember, your anger is usually just telling you you're afraid of something. Like I said, that you're being uh, treated as unimportant or not heard or like the last person in line all the time. Wisdom. That's a mentor's card as well. Declutter is a letting go. I do not read these paragraphs underneath. You're welcome to if you want. I just have not found them to have any validity. And so I just kind of don't any longer. I use them as keywords. So wisdom are the lessons that we have learned. Declutter is letting go of things. And you may have trouble letting go of things. And it's because you haven't figured out the origin of sexuality is frequently about passion. That's an anger card. Care required. Difficult times. All right. So group number three, the answer to your question is that your relationships will improve in all areas of your life when you continue to do the work around your anger, which you don't know how to express it in a way that is productive for you. The easiest way to heal that is to continue to do some work on your boundaries. This is a boundary card, and we literally got a boundary card here. Boundaries are the most important thing to being able, and which is giving yourself permission to say no to people when they're asking you for things. If you've got a people pleaser's energy, consider how much it costs you to be that people pleaser sometimes. I just have this energy around what you're asking about is like, when do I get my life? What have I done wrong? You haven't done a darn thing wrong. You're still just healing something. And it's a very normal and natural part of life to need to heal something. So the person that you're asking about looks absolutely fine. But the lesson that you need to learn is about impulse control. And the way to control impulses, particularly anger that can be destructive, is figuring out what you're really angry about. Because when it comes out with that disproportionate response that's being triggered, and figuring out why you're being triggered. And the other person will never be really responsible for the things that trigger you. Now, if there, there is a form of narcissist that will like, you know, trigger people for fun. Um, my ex-husband used to do that to me. Um, that's abuse. That's just plain abuse. But if somebody is unwittingly like triggering you, they are not trying to hurt you. Even if it reminds you of something that like the only way to be safe in a situation was to blow up, which I get that message sometimes. Group number three, just keep working on your stuff. Unique power. My uniqueness separates me from the monotony of others, and I find great joy in this. Blending in is no longer in my vocabulary. I will shine like the moon and stars over everyone I meet. I will never again let others diminish my light. That's what I think gets you angry, is when you think people are treating you as being your feelings being unimportant. Because that's what I've got. 
that the only way for you to hear, feel heard when potentially you were a kid was to scream because nobody listened otherwise. Action taker, to carry me forth into life, I want to live, I will focus on my actions, I allow myself to think, to plan, and to pause. However, I will not get stuck in this mindset. To grow and learn, I take external steps to improve my state of being. Keep working on impulse control and anger issues. Now, are they one and the same? Always no. Like sometimes we can undertake some self-destructive habits and not understand why. Group number three, keep working on impulse control to have the best relationships that you can. You've got the worth waiting for card from the uh, romance angels. And then children, interference, time apart, play hard, lesson, and then new love. That's what they're trying to teach you. The play hard, as, uh, play hard is a difficult one because it's about allowing yourself to enjoy your life, but it's also about the actions that we take. If you're wondering what's going on, if you're asking about a person, is this the person, is this the person, you're still working on learning how to heal impulse and anger, which is about making you happier in your whole life and also allowing you to have the type of relationships because you're very loving with that goddess energy, but you learned the wrong things and you've been having trouble unlearning them. Please don't be hard on yourself for that. Just keep doing the work and you will get the results. What do you need to know about them? They look fine and you're still working on an issue that you can free yourself from. Be kind and patient with yourself. Patience is the cure for frustration. Be patient with yourself. When you potentially like have a bad moment, are reactionary, figure out what it was that was upsetting you and you will start being able to take it apart so that it is not something that in any way diminishes you, okay? All right, group number three, that was your reading. I hope you enjoyed it. Take care, be well. Welcome back. If you chose pile number four, this is your reading. We're putting the number four over there so people can easily fast forward to their readings. But as always, there are timestamps in the description box down below. We have tarot cards. We've also got some pre-shuffled and pre-selected oracle cards. I don't know what they say. We're just going to go into this. We'll get more oracle cards as the reading reveals the need for them. The question is, what do you need to know about them? And please don't forget to subscribe before I get started. It helps my channel. If you like the reading, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. And if you want to book me for a private reading, there is a link to my website in the description box down below. Judication, which is about judgment. It can be an actual legal matter. I did not intend this to be a personal relationship reading. So far it has been. Let's see if this deviates from that. Judication, it's like a, a judge, really. With the one in the upright, very interesting. Let's see where we're going with this. I have self-love, okay. Hmm. With to be fair, that's really what judgment is about as well. And then I have beggar. Confronts empowerment at the level of physical survival, awakens the spiritual authority of humility, compassion, and self-esteem. The shadow attribute would be dependence on others to the exclusion of effort. Um, codependency is something that we're always trying to deal with. And you've got two cards of the one and then self-love to be fair. Um, remember, the person who really meets our needs is us. The person who protects us is us. The person, if you want your person, first be your own person. And that, that genuinely, because that way you will be able to meet your needs. You will not be asking another person to do it. Um, and you learn how to be self-reliant, self-caring. And that does not, like, take the sexy out of relationship and romance, by the way. It, it keeps it in, out of a caretaking relationship. Um, if you're asking about somebody, it kind of looks like maybe you're settling. And let's see how, if the tarot cards are going to weigh that out. What, is, what, what does pile number four need to know about them, please? One and two and three. It just, it looks like you may not be being fair to yourself. Like that your judgment is ever so slightly compromised. But we'll see. We'll see. There we go. Comes out with the Strength card in the upright, a card of overcoming with compassion. It's the Leo's card. It's the card of self-respect and pride as well. That comes out with the Judgment card in reverse. Okay. A slight call to practice good judgment in your life to start again, potentially. 
comes out with the sun in reverse, which is a need to heal. And then I have the wheel of fortune in reverse. And then I have the temperance card in the upright, which is a need to heal as well. I have new cycles beginning. Um, try not to have relationships based on financial need. They always go south because people aren't in it for the right reasons. Now, it's a tough world and we need money to survive in it. So sometimes people are like, yeah, you know what, I, we need that. Sometimes you need a person to be able to pay rent. It's better to have a roommate than to put that on a romantic relationship. Ten of Cups in reverse. Oh my goodness. With the Four of Swords in reverse. And then I have the High Priestess in reverse. Now, reversals are not bad. Multiples on these you only want to see in reverse. For instance, the Four of Swords in reverse is about action. The High Priestess in reverse is about truth and clarity and be things being revealed to you. Now, having said that, we have a lot of major arcana on this scene. One, two, three, four, five, six. Three of Wands in the upright, many options. And then I have the Three of Swords in reverse. So I've got three, three as well, which is a card of internal balance and belief in personal power. Um, be careful. My first instinct around, please make sure that you're not trying to, f whoever this person is that you're asking about, please make sure that you're not investing in them solely because you want the security of a relationship. Honest to goodness, that's like that causes toxicity if you're trying to look for something to be taken care of um, because it is actually our job to do so. You've got the Ten of Cups in reverse, meaning like, you know, if don't look for somebody else to take care of you because that's your job. And we all have to learn that part and we'll be so much safer in our relationships once we do. And your spirit guides are always trying to bring you opportunities to examine that. But it really does look as if you have multiple options in your world. You're still trying to heal something. And the person you're like asking about, heartbreak, the person that you're asking about is not, not somebody to invest in. Okay, let's see what we've got. And it's not because there's anything terrible about them. It's that because like I've got this settling energy, this beggar energy where it's like, you know, be fair to yourself. Make sure that you're really making sure that you're asking somebody to rise to the level of expectation rather than, well, they'll do type of energy. It's just, I've got those two, adjudication and then to be fair with judgment in reverse. Be careful, hot and cold. Twin flame, secret admirer, and then spring. Spring is new beginnings. Um, a lot of twin flame connections are actually karmic relationships trying to teach us something. Um, the reason we feel so compelled towards that person is they contain an answer for us. Not all twin flame, not all people who think they're in a twin flame connection are actually in a karmic relationship, but by the same token, not everybody who thinks they're in a twin flame relationship are in a twin flame relationship. Sometimes they're in a karmic relationship. And it will feel just as compelling. Spring, that, that's a new beginning with something. What else have we got here? One and two, because I don't have anybody coming back, but that Twin Flame Secret Admirer and Spring energy. I, I just, like, it's like somebody wants you, and it, they, they're, they're, they're an experience to have, but they're not somebody to invest in. We have lightning, sudden change, shocking news, surprise, epiphany, upheaval, and transformation, ascending, transcending obstacles, learning, expansion, new phase, preparing for union with paradise, happiness, expansion, joy, playfulness, oneness, enjoying each other. I want more on that. Heartbroken. Okay, I want one more on that. Butterfly. Heartbroken, deeply hurt, sadness, uh, separation, breakup, feeling lost, grieving, and mourning. And then uh, the butterfly relationship evolving into the next phase, healing the inner child and growth. Okay, so group number three, whoever it is you're asking about is part of a healing journey. Now, it is possible that you will have a twin flame returning to you from part of this. And that there will be a time for it. 
but right now, whoever it is you're asking about, please don't settle is the energy that I just keep getting on that. And it's not like, mm, there's more to come. Like this, whoever it is you're asking about is not your end game. Now, there is one proviso here. If you're, if you've been with somebody for four or five years and you're out and this, you pick this pile, it's not your pile. Because like this person barely knows this other person. This is, the, it's like a fairly new relationship and you're asking to, like, here's the thing, you might have already done a ton of work around healing and you might be saying, you know, oh my God, how much more can there be? As much as there is. And it really just kind of looks like you're willing to, I keep getting this weird subtle vibe on this person. And the one and then self-love only accepting the love that you deserve and the person who, people who treat you properly is part of self-love and it is part of a healing journey. Beggar, to be fair, one, one, two, what have we got for this? Can you tell me what's going on with group number four? Because whoever it is you're asking about, it's like they're not good enough. And like you kind of know, but you also kind of don't want to know. Intuition, you already know the answer. You see different pages. Patience, play hard, which is an enjoy yourself, integrity, one more, release. So whoever it is you're asking about, I don't have the world's best energy on them. Like they're just not the right human. And by the way, this is genuinely not someone that like you've had any type of relationship with of any duration. So if for some reason it really is a twin flame situation, you could have only ever had a very brief relationship. It, it, like if you if you had a very brief relationship, one or two months, please understand that the bulk of what you know about that person is actually based on a very, very brief experience and that there may be more to them. And it's just, I've got somebody here who's not being fair to themselves, that there is more in their healing journey to come and that the person that they're asking about, it's like, you know what? They're just like, they're not fair to you. They haven't treated you in a way that would really earn your approbation. Don't give your heart to somebody unless they've really earned it. Here we go. One and two and three. Let's get going with the romance angels. Very soon, clearly decide what you want so that it comes to you now. Now, very soon can be like, you know, determining your own worth. Here's the thing. You're asking about somebody and this person does not appear to be right for you. Now, that doesn't mean that there isn't somebody who's right for you. It's just, if you're lonely by yourself, ask yourself why that is. Because when you're really healed, you love yourself and you like being with you. All right, that's separation, deception. All right, so very soon separation and deception. Whoever you're asking about, this person is not the worthy person. And it's not that, like, and by the way, do I, I hate giving readings like this, but I have to. Because sometimes we want to invest our time in somebody who is not worth that time and that investment. And all of the, like, if you're an awesome human being trying to give your love to another person, like, it might take a little while for the right person to be found. Whoever you're asking about is not showing up as being somebody who is worthy of you and ask yourself what that's about what is it that you need to heal the thing about people being in separation is that very soon separation and then deception the thing about being in separation is that most of the time there's somebody who is sitting there reserving all their love for somebody who is doing nothing to earn it like everybody has their own work to do, but like while they do that, get on with your life because you deserve to have a great, big, wonderful one. When people are in separation, I always advise them to let go because that's how we get the love that we truly deserve is when we won't accept lesser treatment in the name of some spiritual concept. To conform is to die inside, be brave and be yourself. It is time for a change. Do not wait or put off decisions any longer. Okay, well, hmm. it's always a tough one when I see energies that don't support. Um, hopefully this is not shocking or bad news. And remember, you know, 
Maybe you picked the wrong pile, it does happen. But over and over again, this one is saying, not this person. It's time for a change, separation, and loving yourself, being fair to yourself, and not accepting the crumbs from somebody's table when you deserve a banquet. So group number four, a slightly rough one in that like you're, you're, you're settling for somebody or you're trying to or you're investing in somebody who has not earned you. And that's a really, that self-love. When you look at that and you're like, yeah, you seem special, you seem neat. You have also not treated me properly, so goodbye. And to, if they ever want to come back and put in all the work to woo you and to win you and to prove to you that it's like, no, you are absolutely, I am worth the investment of your love and your time, your energy and your focus, then they can do that. But please don't sit on a shelf waiting for somebody to recognize your worth. Be the person who recognizes your worth. Let go of connections that are not truly in service of your path. Please, whenever we sit and we wait for somebody, it's always somebody else is out there having their life. And you're sitting there hoping that they will realize, oh, I'm the right person. That's the right person. I threw away the right person. If that were true, they would need to come back and make serious amends before it would ever be appropriate to let them back into your life anyway. Once somebody has treated you badly, if they have ghosted you, if they have left you, if they're not focusing on you, ask yourself, is it fair to me? Is it fair to me? Would my guides, my guardians, my ancestors, and my angels who love me and want every good thing for me, would they really be telling me that a person who has treated me so badly is worthy of my love and attention. Because there's something around a twin flame and somebody might be trying to continue a twin flame connection that is actually a lesson to be learned from, which does happen. Or it is also telling you that you may have a twin flame coming back, but that if you do not teach them in your response to them that what you've done in the past is new, no, it's a no-go, I will not accept treatment like that, then they're not gonna change anything. And that is, in those separation situations, that person needs to radically change before they hold a place in your life. Sudden change, destructive behaviors, soulmate, there we go, karmic bond, positive transition with soulmate, and then new or revived relationship. So group number four. If you're asking about a person in your life, I have very much a please don't settle energy on this. If you're asking about anything that has to do with a twin flame, exact same message. Please make sure that you are not settling for less than you truly deserve and trying to make an undeserving person the one because whoever is really deserving of you is not somebody who would ignore you, okay? And that is not experience, that's not treatment that and I understand this might make people upset. I would much rather make you upset and have you have a better life outcome because people who treat you like that will not change unless you tell them, I will not accept that treatment from you. And if they're not in your life to be told that, then let go of them. And if they ever want to come back, then they can work their took us off to make sure that they do deserve you. But it needs to be work. And it needs to be something that they are completely dedicated to in order to deserve the type of love that you want to give to somebody. Do not settle either. So I had two different scenarios at play there. Don't, and it's still the same deal. Because if you're accepting treatment that is not worthy of you in the name of a spiritual connection or a great love, then you are settling because there is something better out there for you and your guides want to help you find it. Okay. No, that one's not going to be popular, but sometimes it is necessary. Take care. Be well.